What's up everyone, Mike from Flight Club. In this video, I'll be reviewing a product that I've been using and I love. This is the FreeSky XSR F40. It's the flight controller the Flight Club boys, NV Astro, said Hendo, aka Yo Baby Daddy, and myself will be using this year. We've been using this flight controller for the past three to five months and we've yet to have one go out on us. And if you watch NV Astro and Yo Baby Daddy's videos, you know these guys beat the crap out of their parts. So if it's if it can withstand their abuse, you know for sure it's tough. So I won't go into the full details of the board. Um, you can find all the details on the product page. I'll just go over the highlights of the board. So, see what you get inside. All right, so inside you get the manual, as usual. Um, you get a little bag of uh, header pins and these little rubber grommets So if you aren't using a flight club frame, you'll need these little rubber grommets that go into the board So the FreeSky XSR F40 is a F4 flight controller. It has a micro SD slot for black box recordings It's got a 5 volt uh, 200 milliamp output on all the little 5 volt outs on here. It's got these little built-in dampening silicone grommets to uh, squash the vibrations going to the gyro. So if you aren't running a flight club frame, you'll need these things, but um, it's still nice to have. Um, you, it takes input voltages from 4 to 10 volts with 5 volts recommended. This means you can't connect the flight controller directly to the battery. It's a little bit of pain in the butt and the reason why I didn't like this flight controller for the first time I used it because if you aren't using an ESC with a 5 volt BEC, you'll have to run something like a 5 volt Pololu or something. But if you pair it with the correct ESC, like this Speedix IS30, it's super easy to set up because the Speedix has a 5 volt out right here and then um, it has a VBAT wire also. So when you hook this up to your quad, like this, I've got this Proton set up with the um, IS30 speed controller um, with the XSR F40, and I'll show you the build in a little bit. So if you have it with the correct speed controller, it's super easy to set up. It's got six PWM outputs um, with the four main use for quads in, in the four corners of the board in the beta flight configuration. So you have one, two, three, and four over here. Um, it's got beta flight OSD, so you can display uh, info such as voltage, flight timer, call signs, or RSSI. It has full support for LUA script with the ability to tune PIDs. And if you're using a VTX, like the TBS Unify or the Immersion RC Tramp, you can change the VTX band channel and power from the OSD. I'll get into this setup a little bit later in the video. And the best part of the this um, XSR F40 is that it has a built-in XSR with full duplex du uh, telemetry and full range, meaning it has two antennas. The 16 channel S bus signal is set up on UART 1 and the RSSI signal is set sent out on channel 8 and the smart port is on UART 6. We'll get into all these little details a little bit later. So let's talk about why this flight controller kicks ass. Having a built-in receiver, this XSR, it makes building so simple. I really love this feature because it eliminates one extra component that I have to worry about when building. And anytime you can eliminate a component, that just means um, it reduces the amount of solder points. It's one less component that I have to find a way to mount and one less thing that can fail in a crash. It makes building super simple and super clean. I'll just show you what it looks like in this uh, Proton build. Um, quickly because I'll be showing I'll have a video coming up on how to build this exact build pretty soon so you just pop off these things and plug the camera and here is the XSR F40 so as you can see it's super clean the stack is so small and simple um, this is a using 20 millimeter screws, so the stack is actually less than 20 millimeters. So you can see right here, I got the IS30 flipped upside down to make more room for the um, the XSR antenna wires right here, and it's got replaceable antenna wires. 
and uh, everything just sits real nice and neat and I've got it set up with the TBS Unify. So on paper, oops. So on paper, it doesn't look like the XSR F40 has many UARTs. But if you take in consideration that it has a built-in XSR, um, which actually takes up two UARTs, UART 1 is the S-Bus signal and UART 6 is smart port. So if you were to use a regular flight controller, it would take two UARTs to connect to connect an SS XSR anyway. So that brings us to how do you get LUA script to work on this flight controller. Um, with the board as is right now, all you need to do is configure the settings in Betaflight to and have the correct scripts on your Tyrannus to have the ability to tune your PIDs. So that's half your L, um, LUA. To, but to have the ability to change VTX band channel and power levels, you would need to run a VTX like the um, a VTX like the TBS Unify with the Smart Audio or Immersion RC's Tramp. Um, normally you would need a spare UART to connect the smart audio from TBS Unify but the XSR F40 doesn't have a spare UART so what do you do? so no worries because you can reconfigure the LED output um, to be used for smart audio of course you won't have the ability to control your um, to do like an addressable LED RGB LED, but you can still run a um, LED. You just won't have the ability to make it flash rainbow or whatever. I'll show you quickly on what it looks like on mine. So plug this, take this off. So right here, as you can see, I have the, this is my um, TBS Unify connector. This is video going to the OSD part, and then I got power on 5 volt ground, and then I have the smart audio wire set up on the LED right there. So I won't go into the full step-by-step -step details on how to do it in this video because I have a Proton build video coming up using this flight controller. But on my website, I have step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this with um, everything you need to enter. So just um, I'll put a link in the description below so um, you can see it. But I'll just go over it quickly here. So first, go in the Configurations tab and enable Soft Serial and Telemetry. And then go in the CLI commands and type resource LED underscore strip one none, hit enter, and then type resource serial underscore TX 11B06, enter, type save, and then hit enter. And then go in the ports tab and set smart port for telemetry output under UART 6 and then TBS Smart Audio for peripherals on Serial 1. So that's it. I mean, if you have your Tarana set up with the LUA script, you can have full telemetry, full LUA script, meaning PID tuning, rates, VTX, uh, channel, band, and power on this flight controller. So I'll just show you what the LUA script looks like on the XSR F40. Alright, so if I page down, here's my telemetry screen, here's my voltage, and that's my RSSI. And you go down, whoops, page down, here is my PIDs. Here are the rates. And then here is the VTX band channel and uh, power output. The XSR F40 costs about 50 bucks. It may sound like a lot for a flight controller, but if you break it down, it's actually pretty cheap. It's a F4 flight controller with a built-in receiver, the XSR. Um, if you compare it to a similar setup like the Betaflight F4, which is about $42, and then you add on a RXSR for another 20 bucks, that's like 62 bucks. So for less money, Easier install and cleaner build, the FreeSky XSR F40 is a winner to me. Try it out for yourself and let me know how you like it. So if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'll be using this flight controller in a Proton Race Quad build coming up soon. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.